and now to bring you family. David E. Montgomery, MD, PhD, is a proud product of Chicago Public Schools, Christ Universal Temple, and the teachings of the Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman. He received his BS in biology at the prestigious Morehouse College in Atlanta. So do this for me. Just, just clap when he comes up. Just clap when he comes up. Just because we use up all his time. Don't worry about it. It's all good. He earned his PhD in physiology from the University of Illinois at Chicago and his MD from Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine. Hold on. Board certified in both internal medicine and cardiology, Dr. Montgomery now practices preventive cardiology in Atlanta. His mission is to make a giant contribution to mankind. Dr. Dave, as he is affectionately called, is leveraging television, mass media, and social media to change the way the world thinks about health. He has appeared on all major networks and frequently appears on CNN and HLN. He was contributing health editor for Ebony Magazine and Ebony.com. Dr. Dave has recently been a special guest on the Steve Harvey Daytime Talk Show. Hold on, hold on. David is the loving husband of Miss Sarita Montgomery and the father of two beautiful children, Maya and Sloan. David is my brother, David is our family, and I'm happy to present to some and introduce to others Dr. David E. Montgomery. It's good to be home! It's good to be home! Always, 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 always giving honor to God and paying homage to the Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman. And to my dear brother, the Reverend Dr. Derek Wells. I say to all of you, good morning. Didn't we have a great time yesterday at the Father's Day breakfast? Where are my men? Where are my men? We had a fantastic time. They had such a good time, they're not here right now. <laughs> to all of the ministers, I love you. To the Reverend Dr. Clay Evans, I feel the consciousness. I feel the consciousness. And to the women's choir. Now that's a welcome home right there. That is a welcome home. Too strong, got to keep on keeping on. I happen to believe uh, that Father's Day is actually a day where we should be focusing on the reason that we are fathers as opposed to celebrating the people after whom the day is named. And so, if you will allow me, I'm going to addend with subtext the lesson titled today called A Father's Heart. A Father's Heart straight from a father's heart. A lesson for my girls. A lesson for my girls. What I would want to teach to my girls and hope that you would glean some modicum of benefit from the words that I'm going to say would be in two sentences that I love you dearly and you are powerful beyond measure. If I can instill in my girls how powerful, the power within them to do what they want to do, to be what they want to be, to have what they want to have, what other lesson is there? In any facet of life, if they know that they have the power to create whatever they want to do, be, and have, in relationships, in finances, in work, in occupation, in every facet of life, what else? 
is there? It is exactly what my mother taught me. The first, as I move quickly through, some of the lessons. And chief among them is what you think is king. What you think is king. What you think about yourself, what you think about the world, and your place in it is king. Period. It's not your successes, it's not what you've done, it's not your disappointments, tragedy, it's not failure, it's not your circumstances, it's not your station in life. It's not your mother, it's not your father, it's not your spouse, it's not your boss. It's not what somebody did or said, it's not what happened yesterday. Nothing is more critical than what you Nothing is more critical than what you think, the thesis for today. It's not money. And although my girls will not have any worries about money, it is not money. But the thought, the concept, the conception that they have all that they need, that is a thought. So that's why a poor boy from Louisville, Kentucky, can get you to think that he is the greatest of all times. Because it has nothing to do with money. And the so-called rich kid can feel and live in a life of despair and virtual squalor because it's not about money. It's not financial wealth, but the concept, the thought of being whole. I want to share with you, there is a, an R&B singer. Some of you know Kelly Price. We know Kelly Price. Kelly Price struck me just this past week. I was watching a television show called Unsung and was telling about her life. And she talked about how she was homeless with her mom. You may, may, people may have seen this. She was homeless with her mom for years. And she would find herself going to school, stepping over bodies, drunk bodies, dead bodies, she said, saying to herself, I live here, but I do not belong here. Okay. Homeless, I live here, but I do not belong here. That's what she thought. And because that's what she thought, that's what she got to experience. She is no longer homeless. I'm going to tell you a quick story. Um, oh, many of you know the Reverend Kevin Ross. You know Kevin Ross? Kevin Ross is the other half of the Brothers of Thunder. Come witness this contagious spell that you're under, for you're now in the presence of the Brothers of Thunder. You remember that? Okay. We had a lot of fun with that, yes. Kevin and the Reverend Eric Donaldson were visiting in Atlanta just after we had uh, purchased our new home, and we were reminiscing. And I'm going to tell the story for the first time. And I, um, I had been doing some reading, research for something else that I was doing, and I told Kevin, I said, Kevin, Eric, do you realize that by some people's calculations, I was poor? <laughs> now. Do I look poor to you? <laughs> and Kevin's like, what are you talking about? You were poor. Well, if you go by somebody else's calculations and the census data, they called a single mother with three children on a Chicago public school salary right near the poverty line. Surprise to me, because I have never thought that I was poor, and I will never be poor. That was a shocker. I had to think by, 
when you, when you grow, it takes guys a long time, doesn't it, guys? It takes us a long time to kind of get mature, start thinking about what people have done for us and be gracious and, and, and filled with gratitude. And I started to think, I always knew my mom was amazing, but what kind of woman did she have to be? What kinds of thoughts did she have to think to make sure that three kids who, in somebody's estimation, were otherwise poor, never had that thought in their mind for one day. We never thought we were poor. Right. I called my sister. I said, Gloria, do you know that some people thought that you were poor? She was like, uh-huh. <laughs> it simply didn't. That wasn't our reality. Because my mom always taught me, you can do it if you can see it. You can have it if you can see it. If you believe it, you can be it. And then she put me in a place where that's all we talked about, <laughs> Reverend Carey. <laughs> I was born in Christ Universal Temple. I, I, there is a picture out there. I'm a, uh, there's a picture out there uh, at Coming Out for Christ. Some of you will remember Coming Out for Christ. And my mom is in the front, <laughs> pregnant with me. In 1973, I was born into Christ Universal Temple. Therefore. I was born into the thinking that I can do it, be it, have it. There was no other thought that ever crossed my mind. So this guy who some people might call poor, I, that's your business. <laughs> I'm serious, right? Have you ever looked at me and be like, man, you know, Dave, he's looking pretty poor. No, because that's not what I've ever thought. It is your view of yourself, not how somebody else views you. Yes. Liberate yourself right now from what somebody else thinks about you. Liberate yourself from right now, right now, about what somebody thinks you should do with your life. Well, you should go and get a good paying job. Liberate yourself. I'm free. Say, I'm free. I'm free. Even if it's your... Mother. We love our mothers. Because if it weren't for mothers, we wouldn't be fathers. Every human adult alive, even our children, all children alive had a mother, so we wouldn't be fathers if it weren't for mothers. Let's give the mothers a round of applause. You're not going to get me in trouble in here and not give the mothers a round of applause on Father's Day. I know where my bread is buttered, okay? Don't tell, let somebody tell you what you should be doing. I, I got a whole bunch of stories that I could share with you about what other people thought I should do because of your talents and skills. We talked about this yesterday. We had a good time with a group of, of young men. Don't get your skills mixed up for your purpose. Don't confuse them. Just because you have a talent, that does not mean that this is why you're here. And you're like, oh, you know, David, you really, you really have the talents to be an academic scientist. You should be in the laboratory rattling test tubes. Now, they were really, really disappointed when I told them, but that's not my purpose. That's not why I'm here. I may be good at it because I focused on it. We talked about focus. I focused on it. I concentrated on it, but that's not why I'm here. Well, you, know, you mean to tell me, do you know I am the head of all of physiology on the planet, and you're going to tell me that you are not going to be an academic physician and rattle test tubes in the laboratory? Yes. <laughs> now, who does he think he is? Precisely! Precisely! Free yourself from the people who will tell you that you shouldn't do what you know you want to do. They are called detractors. There's a name. You can call them all kinds of stuff. We're going to call them detractors today. <laughs> a detractor is any wayward thought, frame of mind, person, idea that if only for a short time gets you to focus 
on something else. Gets you to move your focus. We were talking about golf today, and it's interesting. The Reverend Wells and the Reverend Derek and I. And golf is a peculiar game. Any golf people here? Golf is a peculiar game. If you take your eye off that ball one second, you may as well sit down. Detractors will have you coming out of your swing, Tiffany, every time. Where's Tiffany? Every time. <laughs> Tiffany will golf, you, golf your pants off, okay? <laughs> every time, if you bring your head up off that ball, keeping your head in the, uh, down and looking at that ball is important. A detraction is anything that has you do anything but look at that ball. Keep your eye on the ball. Detractors can be intentional or unintentional. Not everybody who is a detractor means you harm. And not all the people that are detractors mean you well. Those are the intentional detractors. What makes up a detractor is this idea whether it's your own idea, right? I said it was a frame of mind, a thought, an idea, or a person, another person. Or a person who believes that there is a zero-sum game in the universe. He or she believes that if you get something, then I can't get it. That if you succeed, then I can't be successful. If we're celebrating you, then who's going to celebrate me? Those are detractors. They believe in lack and limitation. Raise your hand if you have figured out in books or anywhere else, tapes, speeches, seminars, where there is a lack in success. Can anybody ever heard of that? Raise your hand. I don't see one hand. You can't see it. I don't see any hand. There is no lack of success. Why am I talking about detractors right now? Because what we learn is we shouldn't be necessarily focusing too much on the things that we don't want, right, ministers? We should be focusing on the things that we do want. But it's really important. My lesson to my girls is you have to identify the detractors. You have to identify the detractions. Sometimes they come from you. Sometimes you are your own detraction. D, take away from, tract, take you off track. Sometimes you think thoughts that take you off track. Sometimes it's somebody else saying something to you that takes you off track if you let it. We identify detractors so that we can first refocus ourselves on our goals. It is an opportunity to refocus. If you hear yourself saying what your purpose is, but then as you're talking about your purpose, you fill in all the challenges, all the things that can go wrong, as Marion Thompson said. Children are happy because they don't think about all the things that go wrong. It's true. Matt, uh, uh, detractors can masquerade as those giving recommendations and advice, and it can masquerade if you're not careful, as the truth. Your truth is your business. If you don't buy into it, it's not your truth. If you don't think it, you don't experience it. That girl is walking over, she said, dead bodies. They're not alive, dead. I don't belong here. There, there, uh, there's sometimes when we are being detractors ourselves, we might say, well, what she got that on for? What's she wearing that for? She don't need to wear that. Now, y'all all know, you've heard somebody say that. You haven't said it yourself, but you've heard somebody say that. <laughs> and guess what? She thinks she is the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> you can't tell her nothing. And you dare not go tell her either. Her truth is that she looks real good. You can't touch me. And guess what? It does not matter what you think. You are being 
a detractor. Now, here's the thing about detractors. You need to identify them very quickly so that you can refocus, right? Don't get it mixed up for advice. Don't get it mixed up for truth. And use it as a motivating principle. Use it to motivate you. There are so many people who can tell you stories of detractors in their lives that have had the counterintuitive, the counterproductive effect on their, on their success. Because you have been a detractor, now I'm doing even better than I had planned. So if you are ever a detractor, don't be a detractor, please. Don't be a detractor. You're a laughing stock if you're a detractor. And while you're laughing stock, all you're doing is motivating and inspiring the person to be better than they were before. But more than that, if you are being a detractor, guess whose eye is off the ball? Off your ball. Everybody's got a ball. If you don't think it, you don't experience it. If I could teach my girls that. There is one more thing that, is, uh, uh, that, that I really think is, is more important. I said chief among them was what you think, but more importantly, I think, is that my girls remain aware that they and only they, you and only you, control what you think. And you and only you can change what only you can change your mind. It's the only thing that ever has happened. If there's a change in your mind, you did it. Somebody else didn't do it. You did it. How is that possible? How, how, can I, how can I change my mind? How can I be the one that's changing my mind? Well, here's what we understand in science. So I'm going to talk a little biology. Is that all right? Is that all right? Yeah. I stole that from, from Dr. It's like, is that all right? Okay. I'm going to stick to my day job here, okay. All right. Every thought you think has a biochemical, physiologic response in your body. Every last, the one you're thinking about right now, sir, that one. That one too. The one you, yes, that one. A physiologic response in your body. Every time you think a thought, no matter what it is, the corresponding biochemical physiologic response happens in your body. Therefore, you get to live with the physiology of your every thought. Every time you think a thought, you get to live with the physiology of that thought. Watch your thoughts. If you think a thing over and over again, it's what you become. And this is not esoteric. This is not mythical. We know this to be true from a scientific, I mean, there are people who want to see data. I, got, I can show you. If you think a thought over and over again, guess what happens to that biochemical pathway in your body? It gets hardened. It gets hardwired. Neville said, an assumption Love now. An assumption, though false, if persisted in, will harden into fact. An assumption, an idea, a, 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 a concept, a thought, though false at first, if persisted in, will harden into fact. That's going to be your. That, that's going to be what's it, what it is. So, watch this. If I can think a thought and it has a biochemical response, then how can I change who I am? Because if I think something over and over again, then it's who I am, and that's scripture, right? As a woman that thinketh in her heart, so is she. We know that, but now we have the physiologic proof. If I can visualize this, so the neurologist will tell you this. They will show you brain scans of people visualizing different things. If I visualize a waterfall, they will show you the scans of parts of their brain lighting up. That's a biochemical response. Their body's going through a physiological response. 
If I am not in that waterfall, but you ask me to think about that waterfall, I can recreate the biologic, physiologic response in the brain. They show it on, on, the, on the images. So that if I think about something, I'm recreating that thing. If I continue to think about something, that thing, whether it's new, old, continues to be etched in to my brain until it's hardwired. So how can you change it? If you change what you visualize with your wonderful imagination, as Neville would say, if you change what you see, then you can make a whole new physiology. You can create a whole new pathway. And if you keep thinking that thing, then that's what you become. Now that's biology, that's physiology. If you want something different than you have right now, ministers, think a new thought. Now, that's not news to anybody in here. But if I could tell my girls that they can control what they are, do, be, and have, by changing their thoughts, there is no better lesson than that. Here's the last thing that the neurologist will tell us. They will tell us that if you say a thing, if you speak it, if I say waterfall, and I don't just say it rotely, but I think about the waterfall, what I say turns into a thought that's reflected in my brain the same as if I'm sitting in front of the waterfall. Therefore, my girls will learn if you want to change what you see and what you are, if you want to change what you are, change what you say. No, that's not news to anybody in here, but this is what we're talking about teaching our, our children, our girls. So if you can see it, you can be it. If you say it, you can have it. Now, to a young child, that is practical Christianity. That's all I was ever taught. Okay? With songs that Reverend Carey changed from the original words to words that told me that I'm alive, alert, awake, and enthusiastic. I, listen, if you're saying I'm alive, alert, awake, and enthusiastic, and you're going to sleep, c come see me in the office. <laughs> you got some explaining to do. So you can change your mind by using your beautiful, wonderful imagination. As you use your imagination, you create new physiology in your mind's eye. The eye of your mind is God in creation. Therefore, as you imagine things, you are creating through your imagination. God is creating through you. That's how God creates. That means that you can create whatever you want if you can imagine it. If you can conceive it, my mom used to say, then it's yours, because I can make a new physiology. I can think of something that's never been made before and think a new thought, and it will come into fruition. Indeed, it's the only thing that has ever worked for me. If you see me do good works, glory to God, it is because it has first occurred in my thoughts. I first said it in my words. Didn't beleaguer or belabor it but let it have its own course. God creates through your imagination. So you're powerful beyond measure because of this unlimited, unbridled, imaginal, creative capacity that is within you to create things big and small if you would only give it a shot. Will you give it a shot? Foster and cultivate your imagination. Let the creation of your young children flourish. Don't hinder them. Suffer the young children to come unto me, to come unto divine thought. Forbid them not. Don't tell them to not tell you, as my daughter will tell us, that there are alligators in our nice backyard. What color are the alligators, baby? 
red. <laughs> Some ugly alligators, okay. What else do you see? Oh, well, there's a teddy bear. Where is it? On top of it. Well, does he have teeth? No, okay, so he's not so ugly anymore. Let them imagine. You are wasting your time if you try to stop it. Suffer the children to come unto me. And if as they go through life, they ask you, what if I fail? What if it doesn't work out quite right? Then your answer really has to be, failure is an integral part of your ultimate success. But ultimate failure only occurs if you quit. Therefore, quitting is not an option. Therefore, quitting is not an option. We do a lot of trying in my family. We do, we do a lot of trying. Sloan will say, can I try this? Can I try that? Absolutely, you can try it. She's imagining. She's creating for herself. I want her to try everything. You know that song? Anybody know that song, Try Everything? Raise your hand if you know Try Everything. It's a, it's, it's a new song. We got some young folks in here, Try Everything. I'm going to end right now, but I'm, can you give me a bass kick? Boom, 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 boom. The song is one of the most inspirational songs out there right now. And part of the song says, I won't give up, no, I won't give in till I reach the end, then I'll try again. I will not leave. I'm going to try everything. I'm going to try even though I could fail. Now, that's pretty cool. Keep going. Talk about the songs nowadays. That's a great song. Sloan loves that song. Right? Yeah. When I say, oh, 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 you're going to say, try everything. OK? I won't give up. No, I won't give in. Till I reach the end, then I'll try again. No, I will not leave. I'm going to try. I'm going to try again, even if I can fail. Oh, 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 oh. 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 OK? All right, then I'm going to stop, I promise. But this is too good. We got to let our kids try. Stand up on your feet. This is for the kids. That's it. Woo! Come on. Clap your hands. I won't give up. No, I won't give in.